I want to play a game with you. Start off with seven beads and split them up any way you want. So for me, I'm going to split them up like this and have three beads over here and four over here. All right. And then keep splitting each of the subsequent piles down until you get a bunch of piles that contain one bead in each of them. Okay, there we have it. We split up all the beads into piles of one beads each. Now, every time we do a splitting, we're gonna record the number of beads in each pile. And then every time we split, we're gonna take the product of the number of beads in each. Now let's add all these numbers up. So here we get 12, two, And so our total, which is 21. Now I want to play this game again, but I'm going to let you play it. Start with a pile with seven beads and split just like this and see what number you come up with. How big can you make it? How small can you make it? Give it a try and see what you come up with. So I'll try this again quickly on my own with a different splitting and see what we come up with. Here are my numbers. For a total of 21 again. What is going on? Why is this phenomenon happening? Tune to this video to find out two different reasons why. Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar, and today we're gonna to discuss this interesting problem involving splitting beads, and why when we start with seven beads, split the piles up, multiply the number in each splitting, and add everything up, we get 21. Now what I wanna do is start by investigating what happens with small numbers of piles and see if we can get a general formula no matter what the size of our starting pile is. So say we started with a pile with three beads. Here we can split it up only into a pile with two and a pile with one. And then subsequently, this pile needs to be split into two piles of one. So if we add all this up, we have two and one, one and one, we multiply these, we get two and one, which is three. So if our total number of beads to start with is three, the total that we get at the end for the sum of all the products is three. Now let's see what happens with four beads. I'll do a particular example. Let me split them up into two and two. A total of two, a four, one and one giving us six. So for four beads, we have a total of six. We knew that with seven beads, we got a total of 21. And there's something that we should mention here. We noticed with this example with seven beads, that when I did it two different ways, and when you tried it on your own, no matter which way we did it, we got 21 as a total. So it seems like, surprisingly, no matter which way you go about this, the total that you get doesn't depend on how you split the actual beads. Let's try this one more time with five beads and see if we can get a pattern. Okay, here we start with five beads. I'll split them up randomly. And so we get a total of six plus two plus one plus one, which is 10. So five beads, we get 10. And I'll mention, that with six beads, we can probably guess what happens. So here we had three as a total, then we added three, then we added four. It seems like we might add five, and then here we add six. So if you have n beads and try to guess the formula, well, if you take a look at this, if you multiply these numbers on the right by two, here you'd get six. These numbers you get are the numbers on the left times the number one before it. So for example, 42 is seven times six, 30 is six times five, 20 is five times four, etc. How did he think to just multiply by two like that? So it looks like this is n times n minus one. Well, that'll give you this number on the right, so we have to divide by two. And so no matter what we do, it looks like the formula for this is gonna be this quantity right over here. 
So now we're gonna give two different explanations why this actually is the case. So I'd like to start with the first explanation, which uses the principle of mathematical induction. So here we start with n beads, and we wonder what the total product is gonna be. Now we know, we showed earlier in this video, if you have three beads, no matter what you do, you're gonna end up with a total of three, right? And we can see that kind of quickly over here. If we start with three beads, no matter what you do, you have to split them up initially into two beads and one bead. And then subsequently that two bead piece has to be a one and one. And so we get a total product summing up to three. All right, so now let's start with n beads and ask what happens in the first step. So in the first step, we split this up into two piles and we don't know how many beads are in, are in each pile. So we have some number of beads here, let's call it K. And subsequently the number of beads in this pile is N minus K. Great. Now what happens in the process? Well, you can think about this as starting the game over with these two piles, subsequently breaking things down as we go along. And inductively, the total sum of the products down this chain is gonna satisfy this formula here, but with K instead of this N. So the total sum of all the products here is gonna be K times K minus one over two. Whereas the total sum of products over here by the same argument is gonna be this quantity N minus K times the quantity minus one all over two. Now that takes care of adding up all the products down this entire chain, except it's missing one of the products, the product that happens right here, K times N minus K. So with our two inductive pieces and this one last product we have to take into account, the total sum of the products down the big chain starting from this initial set of n beads is the sum of the numbers in these three boxes. So let's quickly add these three numbers here and see what we get as a total. So we have this quantity here, k times k minus one over two. Then we have this quantity here, which I'll write as two k times n minus k over two, plus the quantity n minus k times n minus k minus one all over two. Okay, let's go ahead and actually simplify this. We'll pull the half out. We get k squared minus k. Here we get 2kn minus 2k squared. And then we get a bunch of contributions from this right here. Now, if we simplify this, we have these two contributions canceling each other out. Uh, these three, all the k squared contributions, uh, 2kn and these 2kn's go away. And look what we're left with. It's a half of the quantity n squared minus n, which is a half n times n minus one. And that's exactly what we predicted in our formula. So by mathematical induction, we're able to establish that indeed, no matter what we do with the splitting of n beads, we end up with exactly this number as the total sum of all the products along the chains down this process. All right, that's pretty fantastic. So if you like this video so far, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel before we go into a different, really insightful proof of the same process. So for the second proof, what I wanna do is give an illustrative way of thinking about this process, and I wanna illuminate the proof for when n equals seven. So you have seven beads, and I'm gonna do an initial split of the beads, let's say into two piles, one with three beads and one with four beads. And I'm gonna actually draw in the subsequent product that we get in that first split. So the product here is gonna be three times four, which is 12. And the way I'm gonna illuminate that is by drawing a line segment from every single one of the beads on the left to every single one of the beads on the right. So I have something like this. And so that gives us a total of 12 line segments, which is exactly the product that we start off with on that first split. Okay, so now we have these four beads here 
and these three beads in one pile, and we do this again. So we'll split these somehow. Let's say we split this into a pile of two and a pile of two. We'll draw on every line segment from any one of these beads to any one of these beads. So we'll get something like this and this. And then here, we'll do the split maybe like this. So we'll get the line segment to here and the line segment to here. Now we do this again. We're left with pile, we have one pile of one and we have two piles with two beads. So we'll put in the subsequent edges here. So the sum of all the products as we go down our chain, like we did originally, is gonna be the number of edges that we see right here. But by the way that we did this, the number of edges that we've created is actually exactly the number of pairs of beads we have in total. If you notice, you have an edge between every single pair of beads. Now a question for you, why do you know you get exactly each edge exactly once? The number of total edges we have is the number of pairs of beads. We had seven beads. The number of pairs is seven choose two. And that is seven times six over two times one, which is seven times seven minus one over two. And in general, if we had a general N, this would work out to N times N minus one over two. A really interesting way to see pictorially why this formula actually works. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications on future videos.